All right, guys, so this is something new we're gonna start trying here, uh, doing little tutorial videos of simple to intermediate scooter wrenching stuff. Thought this would be a good example to start off with. This is a, whatever, 2005 uh, Honda Ruckus 50cc, and uh, it's just a classic example of a bike that hasn't been used all year round, needs the regular stuff, new gas, carb clean, potentially a fresh battery. This one might be savable, um, but we're just gonna go through mainly the carb clean. Uh, a lot of people I don't think are super aware of kind of what goes through a thorough carb clean. It's, it's actually fairly simple, but you do have to hit a few things that uh, are fairly necessary to get a thorough carb clean and only have to do it once. So here we go. Um, first things first, this ruckus, the customer has already taken off the uh, floorboard. That's a pretty easy thing to do on the ruckus, although you know it's something that you're gonna have to do on the normal ruckus. Um, also, this bike is gonna get a pod filter, so Instead of just getting the airbox out of the way, I'm actually gonna fully remove the airbox. In this video, you don't have to do that uh, normally if you're just doing a carb clean on your stock ruckus. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do is just disconnect kinda all the simple lines of your carburetor. Uh, you have you know, two bolts holding the, the intake on on these guys. They're pretty tight on ruckuses. So you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you don't reef on it too bad because they're usually old and fairly brittle. So you can actually crack the little intake manifold rubber, um, especially on you know older ruckuses, 2005 and kind of earlier. So just make sure you be careful there. Uh, same with the air box too. So if they've seen some weather, the uh, air box intake tube could be a little bit weak. Um, really simple, simple, simple stuff. Um, not much to it, but you definitely have to know what you have to clean. It's uh, pretty common that we get phone calls uh, of customers saying they've cleaned their carburetor and it turns out that they've actually only cleaned the outside. So the outside looks pretty, but it's not important at all as far as actually getting, uh, getting a good car clean. It's what's inside that counts. So you can do this in the bike without taking little things like the throttle cable out if you so feel like it, but just for this video, I'm gonna take the carb completely out so we can actually uh, so we can actually see what's going on inside the carburetor without having it dangling in here. So you have uh, a couple main things. Throttle cable comes out, 12 millimeter bolt, pretty easy to get to. Um, you can also adjust the slack while you're putting it back in in case it's not correct. On the Ruckus, it does have for the CV um, an air filter hose that goes to the top of the carburetor for the CV junction. You get your choke and your throttle position sensor. Those guys are nice, easy connectors on this bike. Sometimes, uh, if you look in here, try to get the camera in a little bit of a better place. The, uh, the wires connecting, there we go. The wires connecting the uh, throttle position sensor sometimes can be uh, taped like this if no one's taken it apart. You can take that tape off if you like, but also if you know where the connector is, you can sort of just squeeze it. Probably not this time, of course. So you have a connector inside the electrical tape itself. I'm not entirely sure why Honda decided to uh, tape over those guys. So you can go in here, just release that. Get all your connectors sort of out of the way. I already have uh, loosened the uh, intake clamp and the airbox clamp. Sometimes the airbox one can be a little tight. You can take a uh, gentle prying action. Just make sure, like I said, if it's if it's old, crispy, you don't want to break your airbox. So this is not something you have to do. But since this bike's losing the airbox. And just kind of pull the airbox completely out of the way. Normally you wouldn't need to do that at all. So, and you have your fuel line one side. Make sure you just kind of gently pull that off because if you're pulling on it really hard, what it's what it's going to happen is it's actually going to rip instead of it pulling out. This one's never been off, so this would be one of those ones where if you're not super careful, it definitely would or could rip. Not the biggest deal, but then you have to replace your fuel line. So the Ruckuses have two coolant lines going through to uh, keep the carburetor up to 
temperature. You have to be careful with those too. If you uh, take your carburetor off while it's hot, like say for jetting or something like that, uh, the ruckus will leak a little bit of coolant. It won't leak a whole bunch. It's not gonna drain your radiator or anything like that, but it will leak, I don't know, a quarter cups worth of coolant, something like that. How's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good. I'll be, be right with you. No problem. Uh, I had that run that... So as you can see, try to get in there. The, uh, these coolant lines on the bottom of the carburetor are what's holding the carburetor in. You want to make sure you're like, actually disconnect those rather than just kind of ripping everything out. And these usually can come off by hand if they're a little tight. You can always take duck build or needle nose pliers and sort of coerce them off. But like, just like the fuel line, you want to make sure that that's not uh, something you rip because those lines are, they're not super proprietary, but you're not going to find them usually at shucks or anything like that. So All right, so once you get the carburetor out, it's nice to have a somewhat, you know, clean area because you are going to have small jets and things like that that you're going to have to worry about. I don't like losing jets. So it's nice to have an area where it's just your carburetor, not uh, not really all the other stuff. So, you know, move, move some tools out of the way. Maybe use like a little pan type of area or something like that. It's just nice to have a clean area to work with, so. Get the camera all situated here so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. So this tutorial should show you how to clean most carbs. And this is uh, this is gonna be for a CV carburetor. Um, so this is gonna be the same as like GY 650cc. Um, obviously Ruckus, Metropolitan, all that stuff. The principles of cleaning these carburetors is is all the same regardless of if you have a cv carburetor pwk um polini cp any of that stuff you just want to make sure that every every passageway this one only has one some carburetors if you look at pwk will have a main jet air passageway and an idle jet air passageway they're all a little bit different you want to make sure that every single one of those passageways air and fuel is completely clear um on this carburetor this is for metro and ruckus and then some other carburetors the, on your mixture screw, they don't give you a flathead, they give you a little D screw, so regular people can't tune your bike. Uh, it kind of sucks, they do make special screwdrivers for it. We can get these. Um, otherwise, if you're just at home and you wanna do it quickly, uh, you can get this out and then slot it so it turns into a flathead screw. Um, that's also a nice little trick, uh, but these screwdrivers work and you don't have to uh, do any grinding on your carburetor, so. First things first, kind of strip the carburetor down. This, again, goes for every every carburetor. You're gonna to wanna to take the float bowl off. If it's really, really, really dirty on the outside, I like to spray it down first so you're not getting uh, road grime and stuff like that inside the carburetor. But like I said, the outside is not important unless you want it to look good. And uh, some carbs are easier than others when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the gasket on the float bowl, these seem to be pretty good. Um, some carburetors, they'll fall out every time, and if it gets any ethanol gasoline on it, they'll swell up, and they're really, really difficult to get back in the float bowl. Um, you can actually wipe them down. Just make sure you get every last bit of gasoline off of it. Um, don't use carb cleaner on this gasket. Uh, you wanna use, if anything, soap and just water to get that off. Um, no carb cleaner, brake clean, that kind of stuff. You can freeze the gasket once you get it clean and it'll shrink back down and should go back into its home. You can use a little bit of grease to get it back in there. Most carbs, that's not a huge problem, but some Delordos, really old stuff, um, they'll come out and basically shrink back down and then just pop out every time you take the flow ball off. It's a little bit of a pain. Um, so with this carburetor, uh, you have your, let me get a screwdriver here. You have your 
I guess you could call this a jet. This is for the choke. Um, this doesn't really usually get clogged, um, although it's always a good idea to just kind of blow something through there to double check. Um, the small jet on most carbs is always gonna be your pilot jet. Different carbs are gonna be in different locations. It's not always gonna be in the same spot. Um, this is gonna be your main jet. This is always gonna be underneath the needle of your carburetor. On this carb, the, uh, the needle is controlled by vacuum. So this is gonna be the same as GY6, uh, 150, some motorcycle stuff, any CV style carb, meaning that the slide is not actually actuated by any sort of a cable. The slide is actuated by, uh, by vacuum or by the difference of airflow from the outside of the carburetor to the inside of the carburetor, um, makes a vacuum on top and pulls the slide and needle up. Um, and there's a separate butterfly valve that controls that differential in pressure. So that's how that works. Um, they work really good and CV carbs, you know, people hate on them, but CV carbs actually work really well. So first things first, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, take your pilot jet out. Just be careful if they've never been open, sometimes they can be tight and you don't wanna, you don't wanna break the jet in there because then you have to use an extractor and it sort of becomes uh, not, not so fun. So main jet out, pilot jet out. On oh, the Ruckus and Metropolitan carbs, you're gonna have to sort of either have a D screw, um, a D screw screwdriver, or put a slot in it. Um, but you wanna definitely take your mixture screw all the way out. Um, if you aren't familiar with what carb you're working on, double check where your mixture's set at before you take it out. So when you put it back together, you know your baseline. Th these ones come two and a half out on uh, Ruckus's and Metropolitan's pretty much every time. They're really good about setting that. Um, most CV carbs and some other carbs, if you look, focus if you look down where the where the mixture jet where the mixture screw was it's gonna be real hard to see on this camera but there's actually a uh, a very small washer with an o-ring behind it uh that seals the mixture circuit um from leaking air and fuel through where the mixture screw is so you want to make sure that you don't just go blowing carb clean in there because that will blow out and end up just being on the ground and you'll lose it um sometimes they'll come out just doing that this one's definitely not going to um, there's a few different tricks of getting those guys out you use a uh, good old Harbor Freight air nozzle the one with the skinny jet air you can use the rubber tip ones too but these are kind of nicer for doing carb cleans they have uh, you can put this inside the passageways a little bit better than the rubber stuff um, so you can put your hand over where that's gonna come out, kind of put a little blast of air in the mixture circuit, and that should, oh yeah, that one's in there. So you just make sure you don't wanna lose the small O-ring that's inside there. So that's that. This is not a necessary tool for car planes. This is a very, very handy tool to have for car planes. Um, I'll go ahead and put these on the website. Same with these uh, D screwdrivers after this video, just so we have them on there. Uh, but this is a jet poke tool set. So these are super handy to have around. Um, if you take good care of it, it's a tool that you'll have in your toolbox for many years. It's, you know, I think they're $20 or something like that, but it's a cheap, super handy tool to have around for doing car planes. You can use uh, the jet pokes for other stuff. So it comes with an assortment of uh, little wires. You have your really, really small one, which is on uh, these is pretty fragile. So you want to make sure you don't bend it. This is going to be the one that clears all your pilot jets um, down to about the 30s. So it'll clean any pilot jet that comes in all these scooter carbs. Um, some weird stuff it might be too big for, but that's uh, what that is. Let's see if we can get it to focus. The rest of them are kind of main jet cleaners. And if you're working on motorcycle stuff, these will clean the pilot jets on a lot of other bikes. It's gonna be hard to see in this video. Oh, there you can see. So they're sort of serrated. So when you go back and forth on your jet, it really gets all that corrosion sort of buildup, ethanol, green stuff. If, you're, if your main jet's really clogged, you wanna make sure that you're putting um, the biggest one of these you can in there. So it cleans your main jet out uh, thoroughly because sometimes there can be sort of buildup that stays in there. Um, so these guys, find the right one for the ruckus. These guys basically just go in there and you can 
clear it back and forth a few times. Make sure what you're looking for here on your jets is to see light through. So you want to double check when you clean your jets. It's hard to see on this video, but that you can uh, see through the jets. This one's going to be almost impossible to see in the video, but you can see it in person. Um, that when your carbs clogged, you first of all, you can test it by uh, trying to blow air through it. Um, you know, if you're scared of getting gasoline, did definitely, you know, wash it off first so it doesn't taste bad. Um, if you can't see light through it or blow through it, like this one, it is, yeah, this one's halfway plugged. But anyway, you want to be able to see a nice round hole of light. If you see one that sort of like looks like it has some partial blockage or something like that, first step on these guys, any carb cleaner will work. I like PJ1. Uh, it's the good stuff. Can't get this in California. Um, it works really, really, really good. Um, Multi-use cleaner too, so you can use it on cleaning, you know, grime off your motor and all that kind of stuff. Um, the first step on cleaning these, I'll basically just take this, clear out, until you see a little tiny, until you see the, the carb cleaner basically go a straight jet through the jet instead of it spraying everywhere. It's a little hard to represent on there. Um, the main jet's not, as likely to be fully clogged, but it's always a good idea to to give it a little blast um, and then go through with your jet pokes afterwards to make sure that you have cleared the blockage all the way. Um, by far, the most common reason why bikes won't run, um, well, when the carb's dirty, is because the pilot jet's clogged. Um, the pilot jet is a really small hole. Um, like I think on these ruckuses, it's, a, it's like a 34? 35 S so it's a it's a 35 jet but S is the smaller version of the 35 so it's in between a 34 and a 35 um, they clog really easily um, the main jets a bigger hole so it takes more time and uh, more ethanol stuff gunk to actually plug that jet up uh, so the pilot jets almost always the cause of a uh, of a bike not starting when it's been sitting around for a while so you just go through carb cleaner use the jet poke tool like I said, this is not necessary, but it makes doing a thorough carb clean um, much, much easier. Uh, and then after doing those two steps, go through with your compressed air. Get that guy on there, if it'll focus. Just make sure. It's always better to do one really good job doing a carb clean than two or three kind of crummy jobs. Because if you're doing it two or three times, it just gets annoying, especially on a bike like a Ruckus where you have to put the seat on, the battery, the floorboard. You know, if it's an easy bike, it's not the biggest deal, but on a bike like a Ruckus where it's not all that easy to get to the carburetor if it's all stock, um, it's really, really nice to just do as thorough of a job as you can so you don't have to do it again. Um, I've seen it happen many times where somebody will bring a bike into the shop and they'll say, hey, I cleaned my carburetor out, my bike still doesn't run right, and uh, they didn't necessarily screw anything up, but they didn't thoroughly clean the carburetor and then they go through and, and basically have to pay to get it cleaned which you know is you know not the end of the world or anything like that but it's just it's always nice to do a really good job so on uh that covers your jets those jets should be clear just uh double check after you clean them that you can see a nice shot of light through the pilot jet and the main jet and that air can travel through um and you should be good to go on those. Uh, so the next most common reason for the bike to not run, and this will be it for sure the pilot jet is clogged in this situation, um, will be that the actual, the blockage actually travels up the pilot jet circuit. So it's a little hard to see, but this uh, pilot jet circuit basically has air flowing in, and then it basically links back up with this, which is siphoning off fuel going in, and then goes to the mixture circuit. The screw controls how much of that mixed fuel and air make it actually into the engine. Um, this will get blocked. So if the carb is dirty enough, um, the, the pilot jet circuit in the body of the carburetor will actually be plugged. There's a real easy way to tell if it's plugged. So you can squirt carb clean in the mixture screw. With the mixture screw out, you go in the mixture screw um, spot in the body. And if you spray carb clean and it doesn't come out both, see how it's spraying out? Where the, car, where the pilot jet goes, so you know that passageway is fairly clear. If you spray and it doesn't also come out where the pilot jet 
actually allows gas to come out, which on this one is a little tiny hole right past the butterfly and it's coming out. So this one's not plugged. Uh, you know, the body of your carburetor is plugged too. Oh, sorry about that. So the video reached its maximum 20 minutes. It looks like, uh, what I like to do in that case is go ahead and uh, carb cleaner, mixture screw, pilot jet screw spot, and then go through and basically compressed air in the pilot jet and the mixture screw. So, and just make sure that you can see sort of air and uh, carb cleaner stuff shooting out every which way. Including, you know, if you shoot through here, it should come out in the mixture screw side and the little hole, which is really hard to see, but it basically shoots out a little, little tiny jet of uh, fuel for when it's idling right past the butterfly there. And you want to see, uh, you want to see fuel, or I mean carb cleaner come out every one of those. So that's basically a thorough carb clean on that one. If you have other issues, um, you can check your, you know, you can check your electric choke. That stuff's usually okay, especially on a name brand bike, but Chinese bikes, that stuff does go bad. Um, on this bike, I'm gonna assemble everything because we're gonna get a pod filter, uh, man in the box uh, intake setup on this bike. So I'm actually gonna jet this while it's open. And uh, I just wanted to show, you know, basic carb cleaner video. We're gonna try to come out with uh, one of these videos every other day, kind of depending on how busy it is in the shop. Um, if you guys have any requests as far as seeing general maintenance stuff, CVT installs, uh, any random, you know, like valve adjustments, um, could do one later on because these uh, these motors do have a bucket and shim valve setup, and I'm not sure how many people know how to do that stuff. It rarely needs it, and the bike has to have fairly high miles for it to need it. But that could be another good one. Um, if you guys have any requests, put it down in the comments, or feel free to message me or Brandon um, on Facebook or the customer support group. If you guys want to see any particular videos, awesome. Thanks a lot.